everybody, it's Lauren. Um, this is my first ever podcast. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'll be okay because I'm joined by the lovely Roxy Rose. Say hello. 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> now, we've just done a podcast over on Roxy's channel, so be sure to check that out. What was it we were talking about, Rox? It was the 2017 version of Death Note. Yes, the film version. And we mm. compared it to the anime even though I've never seen the anime. So if you're looking to see whether I give valuable... I don't know what the word is. I I, I contribute. (laughs) I contribute somehow. If you want to see how well I contribute knowing nothing of the subject, go over there. (laughs) No, it's really interesting. And Roxy knows a lot about anime, so do check it out. But please um, be aware that the first two minutes is probably me screaming. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of screaming. A lot of excitement. But it's good I get we... very into it. <laughs> but it's good because we're excited because we're starting a podcast. So yeah. just a little bit of a backstory. Me and Roxy used to live together. Roxy got me really excited into YouTube. And that's why it's a little segue into what we're going to be talking about today, which is just recommendations of who we love on YouTube. Now, as I said, Roxy got me into YouTube. I started watching Markiplier, like, I don't know. How long ago was it? Like two years ago. Probably two or three years ago, yeah. Yeah, so I started with Mark, watched him for six months, then I started watching Jack, and then it's kind of snowballed from there. And as we've stopped living with each other, (laughs) snowballed rapidly, to be fair. (laughs) And as we no longer live together, um, we've stopped letting each other know, like, recommendations. And I need to know, Roxy is the the YouTube gospel. So that's why we're here today. (laughs) That's quite the title you've added to me there. It's true, though. (laughs) It's so true. You always tell me who to watch. And when I watch them, I'm like, oh, my God, yes. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Even if, like, it takes me a year and a half, which is Shane Dawson, I go turn around and watch it. (laughs) (laughs) So do you want to start? Um, well, yeah, I certainly could do. Go for Um, it. All right, let's dig up one of my really old subscriptions then, which Ooh. I'm not sure if I ever gave to you. Um, they're called Film Cow. No, I've never heard of Film Cow. <laughs> Have you heard of Charlie the Unicorn? <gasps> yes. yes. I love yes. Charlie the Unicorn. Here we go. <laughs> right. They were made by um, an animation team under the name Film Cow on YouTube. Oh. And... Film Cow has made the entire Child of the Unicorn series. I think there's one more coming up and then it'll be finished. I didn't even realise there was more than what I'd seen. This yeah. has blown my mind. Yeah, you've got uh, Detective Mittens, the cat that eats hands. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure there's like um, the ghost house. What happens in the ghost house? <laughs> I I'm, I'm on I'm on film cow right now and I am excited. <laughs> the Bernie Corn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this channel so much. It's so funny. Auto subscribe. You do not need to sell it anymore. <laughs> I, I am in. Charlie I not... with your big fat eyes, your big fat frown. <laughs> your world doesn't have to be so grey. <laughs> Oh my god. They've got Tricorn, Lord of Lord of Fate. I haven't seen this one yet. Oh. I'm actually quite excited by um Oh what well, well, oh it's just gone. Where is it gone? I saw one and I was like, Oh Llama with hats. Oh Llama, Llama with hats, hats, yes. That's it. That That's is a dark, one. dark cartoon. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay, let's see what I can I can come back with with that. Like we're fighting it out. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of Binging with Babish? No, I haven't. Oh my god. Okay, <laughs> prepare yourself. Binging with Babish is incredible. Now, I found out about Binging with Babish before Philip DeFranco started talking about him, but he is that good that Philip DeFranco loves him. So what he does is he creates fil- he films cooking shows and the stuff he cooks 
is stuff from films. That was the worst explanation of what he does. But if you go on his channel, he has got all kinds of stuff from things that we love. Like, um, he's got the House of Cards, Freddy's Ribs, Matilda Chocolate Cake, a Krabby oh, Patty. Oh my gosh, yeah. I've, I've actually um, got a couple of channels that are really similar to this. Oh, um, that's good. He does the Ratatouille one. Oh yeah, they've really they've really done well recently, haven't they? Yeah. He does the Inglorious Bastards, Bastards Strudel, Adventure Time Sandwich, Bob's Burgers, and he and he makes them how they're described. And if they don't taste as good as they should, then he makes them beautifully, and he excites me. <laughs> he. <laughs> This is a shameless plug for him as a person, but he's got a book coming out, and I have pre-ordered it. I am excited. <laughs> I'm just so excited about it. I think last week he did, yeah, Courtesan au Chocolat, which is from um, the Budapest Hotel, the Grand Budapest Hotel, and it's just beautiful, and it took him so long to make it, and it's just tiny. And he just goes the extra mile to make everything. Like that Game of Thrones pie... He said he's next level, and it's just full of gamey meat. And yeah. if you're just someone who just wants to... He's got a beautiful voice as well. If you just want to watch, re, it's really well edited, it's really well filmed. And if you just want to sit and watch somebody, his videos are maybe max 10 minutes. I don't think I've ever watched a 10 minute long one. Between 5 minutes and 10. Oh, it's just a lovely way, and he uploads once a week. So that's a really good recommendation, I think. To be fair, I've spotted about a couple of chocolate cakes and some waffles, so I am sold. <laughs> oh, the waffles will be from, um, oh, what's it called? Simpsons. Yeah, he does the, um, yeah. <laughs> mo- is it moon waffles or something? I don't know. Yeah. It's moon waffles. It's exciting. So, yes, I really, really recommend that. Well, <laughs> I don't really have anything along the same line. That's okay. I I went left field from Charlie the Unicorn. True, you did. So I'm going to go way out on a limb to something that I'm hoping you've never heard of. Oh, okay. (laughs) Um, It's a channel called Delightful. Okay. But with doll. Instead of delightful, it's doll-lightful. Okay, I'm I'm Googling. I'm I'm looking. (laughs) Oh. is the artist that got me into bowl jointed doll repaints. Oh and yeah. I'll put some pictures on screen them. of your repaints because they are amazing. So oh, Roxy <laughs> So Roxy <laughs> buys is it Bratz dolls that you have or Barbies? Uh no, it's Monster High. Oh right. <laughs> I was way off. But then you repaint <laughs> them, which I think is a genius thing to do. Um and yeah, you've been doing really well with that. So this is the channel that that inspired. Yeah, um, I'm not really sure which country Delightful's from. Um, I'm, I'm, I'd hazard a guess it's Sweden, but I'm not 100% on that. Which is like really soothing, like a really soothing voice. Oh. So and she does all really cute, like almost, she does anime style dolls. But she also does realistic ones. And oh. she's in the middle of making the entire set of Eevee from Pokemon, the Eevee Evolution, oh as dolls. Wow. And they are so cute. They're so cute. I've just and looked I mean... her up, and it says that she's American but lives in Korea. Oh. I was well off. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But that, that's so cool. She sounds amazing. I love finding little channels where they're really specialised on something. Um, and I, and obviously they're really good at it. And I don't know. I just love little things like that. Yeah. Well, um, she's tied into um, another channel I actually use for the same purpose called Mozekito. And uh, she's... She does the wigs, essentially. She does all the wigs and hairstyling oh, and wow. doll clothes. And she just, she comes up with such techniques that you just wouldn't think of. But they're so simplistic and it's so easy to make. Like, I, I could recommend them both. 
as like a starter pack if you want to get into like remaking dolls or just like listening and to someone with a really soothing voice for, <laughs> for about it. you know I 10 minutes it. that is actually a perfect segue into my next one which is it's disappeared oh god <laughs> there we go i left it right at the top draw with jazza i i'm so sure that i haven't told you about draw with jazza no i've never so, heard okay so what happened was i was looking into starting animation and i i downloaded um, adobe animate which turns out i didn't know this <laughs> Seems pretty obvious. You needed to know how to draw to be able to animate. So nothing <laughs> looked good. <laughs> like nothing I made looked good. <laughs> so I learned how to animate, but I can't draw to animate. So slight issue. But in doing so, he had created a like how to, and I was watching him do that. And I swear to God, I know this guy. He. <laughs> He draws, um, like, 3D people, obviously, and animates with them. But he used to make Flash games way back when. And I swear I used to play all these Flash games. Because I recognise his drawing style. And now yeah. what he does instead is he does little challenges. So he might do only using white pencil challenge, where he like, draw something um, on black paper. Or... Um, his recent one was the upside down art challenge where he put himself in one of those chairs that make you lie all the way back like to stretch you back yeah. out he does photorealism he does all kinds of stuff he's not very good at photorealism i should add but <laughs> all kinds of stuff and i just i love watching people being able to draw and even though personally i would rather watch someone who doesn't draw in a cartoony way i do still absolutely love watching him he comes up with so many amazing ideas he did one where he got his toddler to draw something um and then like scribble on some paper and then he turned it into a piece of art and recently he um sold all his artwork to make some money to turn his garage into um like an actual recording studio and everyone went crazy for it and he got really emotional and he just cried a lot which was so sweet and it was just oh, nice wow. to see him be really personable but um like i watched the one where he sold all his artwork and went through it and it's incredible he'll do twitch streams where um he'll come up with a couple of ideas and get the twitch to vote and then he merges them all together I just I can't recommend him enough. I, I really love watching it, and for someone who can't draw, to like I watch every video, <laughs> like is is so good. And he's Australian as well, so there's always the accent. <laughs> oh yes, the accent. <laughs> the accent. Well, I guess sort of in the same vein as that, I've been uh, watching a channel recently actually, um, called Jordan Persigatti, and okay. he's not an animator he's an artist and i started watching him because he reads creepy pastas as he draws oh my god look at that yeah so but he does these incredible bits of artwork sometimes you know like in a really creative ways like without line art sometimes with a particular color palette sometimes on odd materials like stones or um he did fabric at one point and he finds all these really creepy stories and creepy music. And he, oh, with his soothing voice, he talks through it, the whole thing, reading the story to you as he draws the image out. And then he adds all the blood at the end, and I'm just, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Winning. <laughs> yes, I love horror so much. And um, I think it was last year, Halloween, I binged all his videos in one night, just oh, with a load of popcorn. Oh my god, <laughs> Cause that's amazing. When you get about five videos in, you kind of start feeling it as well. The creepiness, the unsettlingness behind the videos. Like, I was actually feeling a little scared by the time, it was about 1am at this point. <laughs> well, if it so... scares you, then I'm going to be terrified. <laughs> Yeah, I think I was going through the uh, One-Eyed Jack creepypastas, 
and I got onto something about um, a monster that sits at the end of your bed and stares at you. And Ooh. you'll live as long as you look at it. <laughs> oh my god. And I was like, I was getting halfway through it. I was probably slightly drunk at this point as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, so, glad, I'm glad of the side note. <laughs> yeah, so to say that the end of my bed was pretty dark and I was like, I need to go to bed now. But I really don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> if it were, if that worked on you, though, then <laughs> that's got to be good. He is, he's really good. He's, he's really convincing. He writes his own creepypastas as well. Yeah. So, he's kind of... It's interesting, because he, he's, um, his writing's quite new. So he's not too good yet. <laughs> oh. But, you know, you can see him getting there. And the more of his own stories he comes out with, the more exciting it is to see him build on this little creepy world he's, he's making in his head. So, yeah, he's... Uh, I'd recommend his channel. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. Perfect. Okay. Now, while you've been talking, I t- it honestly, it took me ages to find this guy. Um, because I have subscribed, but he's hidden, and I couldn't remember his name. So <laughs> he, it was it's James Lee, L E E, and I found this through Draw with Jazza. He had the guy on his show, and um, they were talking about animation. And the one video that I really think you should watch is Overwatch Noir. And it's Tracer and McCree. And I don't know anything about Overwatch personally. I've watched the playthroughs, obviously. But this animation was next level. Like, I can't... It was only It's only two minutes long. Oh, mm. well, the, the clean version's only two minutes long. That's the one I'm looking at. Um, but, oh, it's so special. As a piece of artwork, it's just beautiful. And I have seen some of his other stuff in the past and didn't realise it was him. And you can see, like, the evolution of his animation change and i just think it's absolutely gorgeous so i i think he's i don't think he's got that many subscribers but oh it's just he really does like that glow really well um and because it's mccree this one's set in like the desert and it's all like that yellow deserty tint it's just beautiful i really really recommend it yeah well i'm on his channel right now it looks it does look interesting yeah. I'll file that one away for, for, for later. For another day, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess sort of along the animation lines, I've got a fair few, but I'm not sure whether you already subscribe to these people. Oh, okay. Oh. So bear with me here. Um, Cranbersha? Yes, love Cranbersha. Yes, we always do. Um, and then there's the original Animator versus Animation. Oh, I've not heard of that. Oh, the original. I'm desperately anime. trying to find his channel. Oh no, wait! Is this the one where it's um the little oh, stick men and they go off the they go off the computer screen and then they fight? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm subscribed to him. I don't know his name either, but we'll Alan find Becker. that. Alan, what? Sorry. Alan Becker. Becker. Yeah. Perfect. Because he did the new one, the new Minecraft one. Oh, I don't know if I've seen that. He did um, animation versus Minecraft and animation versus YouTube. <laughs> I think I've seen the YouTube one. I didn't know he did Minecraft, though. That's cool. Yeah, I think his Minecraft one was one of his best. Really think, liked that. Yeah, I think my one of my other favourite animators, just to throw into the mix, has to be Pixel Pit. Oh, I love Pixel oh, Pit. Oh, I guess I've heard of Pixel Pit. Pixel Pit is... His real name's Robin, and he edits all of Jacksepticeye's videos. So that's probably yeah. how you've heard of him. And yeah. he does the little cube head animations. But I've, yeah. watched li- I've watched live streams of Pixel Pit, and I just love the way that he does the setup of a video. Um, so, I don't, what's it called? Like a room, how he organises the room and does all the lighting for that, and... Yeah. I find that more interesting than like the way actually watching it, like what his end result is. 
I love watching all the back of it and how because the I don't know what he records it in like his animation software but you have to place a little camera and film it from that and move all the people and then you move the camera and I just think it's incredible it's like he's directing his own film and that's why I wanted to get into animation but like I say I don't know what software he uses so yeah and I can't draw so <laughs> again <laughs> it's a bit of a tough one but yeah for as far as animation goes Pixel Pit is by far my favorite love him He's the man. I, I, I must say, I probably still swing towards Cranbersha, just because I think there's a there's a little bit of charm about stop motion, really. Oh yeah, you can't beat stop motion. It's beautiful. Yeah, just... it always reminds me of like the original, you know, the Wallace and Gromit cartoon. Yeah, I was just gonna say Wallace and Gromit. Yeah. There's just so you can tell that lots of love and time have gone into a stop motion. Yeah, I, I like the fact that he breaks it down as well. He like shows you how he makes each piece, and sometimes he'll talk to you about how many months or years it's taken him to finish. And oh wow! Like oh really? Gosh. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, we want to now because we've done. I think we've done a lot of drawing. Well, I've got um, I've got another channel here that I've probably talked to you about a lot. I do not know if if you actually ended up subscribing. <laughs> Okay. Um, it's Yandere Dev. Um, hold on. Let me see if I did subscribe. <laughs> I did not. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> the maker oh. of Yan Yandere Simulator. Oh, he oh. made it. He made it. I love this game so I much. I love the game so much. I have only ever seen Mark play Yandere Simulator. I don't know if Jack ever did, but I've only ever watched Mark do it, and he just prats about, and I would love to see him actually right. really try everything. So this is right. good. Are you ready for this, then? Okay. This is the subscriber for you. This is the gamer you need to watch, because he is <laughs> exclusive. He, he even got a cameo in the game because of how dedicated he is to playing it. That's it, I'm sold. Cub Scouts. Go Cub subscribe Scouts. to Cub Scouts. That dude. <laughs> that dude is amazing. I thought you just meant Yandere Dev out Cub Scouts. Here we go. Yeah. Yandere Dev is the developer of the game itself. So he does the future progress updates, new killing methods, new animation, progress on the actual game, etc. Cub Scouts plays the actual game mechanics. Oh, right. And then he, um, he lets people, like his channel audience, send him suggestions from challenges to bug reports to anything they want him to try in the game, and he'll go and do it. Oh, wow. Like, new killing method? He's going to go kill Kakuna. <laughs> yeah, so just side note, uh, Yandere Simulator is a game where um because oh, yeah. <laughs> we're talking about this game like everybody knows it's, yeah. it's an indie game that's is it still in development it yes, must be it yeah is. so um you're this girl who's in love with yandere senpai. You know, well, love senpai damn it i know all this senpai. what am i doing so <laughs> yandere is in love with senpai and she has so many different ways to make him fall in love with her in the course of a week um and you've got to kill off other people that are love interests and things like that. Um, but there's so many different ways that you can go about it. And it's such, an, it's such a good game. I love all the stuff that they've added to it. Because if you think about it, we've been watching that since you could literally kill one person. And you had to like mop all the blood up and change your uniform and that was it. Yeah, the original Coconut. Coconut Haruka. <laughs> yeah, she was um, the original test dummy for the game. Uh, Yandere Dev even said he never in intended for her to be an actual character, but everyone started loving her because every time there was a new kill method implemented in the game, she was the first person to die. Is this the one that Mark calls Boobs Mackenzie? <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's also called Drill, Drill Tails or Hurricane Hair or... <laughs> All suits her. All suits yeah. her. But yeah. you can do loads of different things from go to the nurse's office and get 
drugs and like drug her and put her in your basement and kill her that way or you could just simply drop stuff on her head or there's all kinds of ways for you to kill these people and get closer to senpai it's just such a brilliant concept i love the game so i'm quite excited by um cub scouts yeah i i found cub scouts completely by accident um it was actually for hello neighbor when that one came out he we was made, um made... the only one doing like a, a proper full playthrough of the game and trying to find all the hidden secrets and stuff like that and i really like secret finding and yeah yeah stuff. And then I realised he'd done Yandere Simulator, and he just covers everything. And then he did 60 Seconds, and he covered everything in that. There, 60 Seconds is so hard. You do not know how hard that game is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I bought that game thinking, oh, Cub Scouts can do this. I can do this. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um... But, yeah. Honestly, um... The other thing I'll say about um, Yandere Simulator is it might be a good idea, if you are interested in the game, to go and get your hands on it now. Because Yandere Simula- Yandere Chan, sorry, <laughs> has actually signed with Tiny Build now. Oh, right. So uh, the progress in the game is speeding up, essentially. They're going to release the first, well, beta, I guess, on uh, Steam. Oh, okay. But it will, it will cost money. So if you want to test the game for free, you should go get your hands on it now, really. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm, I'm on it. I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was a really recent was the um, the partnership with Tiny Build. And that's obviously who Hello Neighbor are um, associated with as well. The thing is, I feel like we need a whole podcast to talk about <laughs> Hello Neighbor because I am disappointed. <laughs> Oh, you didn't go out and buy their um, their beta, did you? No, I didn't buy it, but just watching oh, it. After watching okay. so much film theory and the time and energy and the excitement and just, oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? And now it's terrible. Yeah, I... it's like they, they took like five steps backwards. I know. It's so weird. Anyway, we can't get into that because we'll be yeah. here forever. <laughs> we'll do another. It'll be like the one we did on your channel. We'll just go in. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> next one, I'm going to mention First We Feast, and I am bringing all the foodie channels, but <laughs> I love this. Um, I only watch it for one of the segments, which is probably really naughty. I should probably branch out, but it's called Hot Ones, and it's about um, this guy called Sean um, is the presenter, and he's a really good presenter. And the idea is there's 10 hot sauces, 10 hot wings, they get sl- they get slowly hotter and they have to answer questions um, like pres- like other people come on the show. So they've had uh, Margot Robbie, um, they've had Adam Richman, Steve-O, uh, God, Keemstar, I'm trying to think of anybody <laughs> that's been on Hot Ones. Um, they've had a lot of rappers and people like that like asap ferg oh cara delavine oh that's who i meant not margot robbie damn it they've got very <laughs> similar faces <laughs> um <Thank> you, <laughs> I, yeah there's oh russell brands was really good charlie day ricky gervais um rhett and link yeah, even I, did one I... with them uh post malone James Franco and Brian Cranston was good. And it's just the fact that they have to deal with the spice as well as, like, being an interview setting. So sometimes they'll talk about things that necessarily they wouldn't or they're very candid. Um, Yeah. So, and it's a brilliant watch because not everybody can get through all ten wings just as a, (laughs) a little tidbit so i really love this me and my brother watch this and we make we text each other about it kevin hart's done it uh martin garrix just a couple he even has um a guy on called chili klaus and it's um this guy in oh i'm gonna say the like the nordic countries because i'm not quite sure which one um and Mm. he does something very similar over there and they meet and eat chilies like whole chilies (laughs) It's just crazy. So that I love watching that. That's so much fun. And Sean, like I say, he's a really good interviewer. 
he, he spends a lot of time getting to know them and the questions that he asks they're always questions that are really personable so once they're not just like I like so Brian Cranston I know you did Breaking Bad let's talk about Breaking Bad they're always really about them and he does deep dives on their Instagram and all kinds of stuff like that it's, I love it it's so good yeah okay oh, I've added that one to the list <laughs> nice I will have a look at that. Um, I guess just um, diverting a little to comedy, if yes. that's okay. Yes. I have been subscribed to this person for about two months now, and I love her. Oh, okay. You may have heard her on the radio. <laughs> Superwoman. Really? Superwoman, yeah. She is a huge, huge... Um... What's her face? <laughs> YouTuber. <laughs> yeah. I know. It took me out the world for ages, ages to subscribe to her. I, I take it you already are. Though. No, 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 I'm not. Which Really? I've heard of her and like Lisa Koshy, or Liza Koshy, sorry, um, and all those huge celebrity YouTubers in America. And I just haven't made my way around there yet. It's like... There's Dan and Phil in England as well, obviously, that I haven't. And I'm just, yeah. I just want to add people slowly. So the fact that you've recommended her is great. I, you know, tell me more. Well, I think out of all of them, um, I did have a look at Liza Koshy. She wasn't for me, personally. Okay. And the same with Dan and Phil. I can see why people find them funny, but again, they weren't really to my sense of humour. But Superwoman... She has yet to put out a video that I haven't found hilarious. Oh, okay. I, I just relate so much to her. She just... She's like one of those, like, hardcore feminists. But yeah. She keeps it. she keeps it real. She keeps it down to earth. She's not like, you should do this and you should do that. She's like, I'm going to do this and then my parents are going to have this adverse, totally inept reaction to it. <laughs> Okay. And she's does what you know Shane Dawson dresses up as like all these other characters. Yeah. Yeah, she does the same thing. Oh wow. Oh, okay. She, dress, she dresses up as her parents, her best friend, her nan, her receptionist, <laughs> her boyfriend. So she doesn't need to offend them, she can just be them and be offensive. Yeah. I like it. I like the yeah. I like a like style. She's got um like a really nice mix of videos as well. Like um some she sings in, others she just does your basic comedy sketch. Other times she's travelling, sometimes she does like um charity promotions and stuff like that. Other times she's selling a book. <laughs> Fair enough. She's just she's like a nice all rounder really. Oh good. Okay, because I love YouTubers like that where like, sometimes, like I said, you can go to a channel and go for the content, like I do with Draw With Jazza. Like, it's nice to know a bit about with them, and like you do with your doll people, but you're there to learn and to watch, really. And then yeah. there's some YouTubers where you want to know the person, like Mark and Jack and, God, the Game Grumps, everyone like that. You go for the people, and I feel like, yeah. from what you've described, that's what Superwoman is, so I'm a subscribe. Yeah, I'm excited. And um, just something along the same the same vein, really, with uh, just how she talks about herself while she makes stuff. It's a food channel, which I probably should have mentioned earlier. <laughs> is the uh, How to Cake It? I've got How to Cake It. You've got Yolanda. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good one. How she to is. Cake It. I love how she tries to be like a really cool food channel, but then. She always like laughs halfway through when she's trying to be serious. Yeah, I one similar to that is Nerdy Nummies. Have you watched Nerdy Nummies? Yes, yes. I am subscribed to Nerdy Nummies. Nerdy Nummies is a good time. I really want the book so badly. <laughs> uh, what else? I don't think what I else? Uh, oh. there's, there's, I've got loads that I feel like everyone knows, but maybe people don't. Maybe you don't. Uh, do you know Grave? Oh yes, you told me about Graveyard Girl. Yeah, <laughs> she's amazing. She's she's she in is. a hurricane at the minute, and she's just yeah. living life. 
crazy. Crazy. Well, she gives an alligator its wings. She does. <laughs> oh, I'm str I'm struggling to think of any that you might not know, because you know bad lip reading. Yeah. Which is incredible. <gasps> Beth B. Rad. Do you know Beth B. Rad? No, I don't. Okay, so ages ago there was loads of adverts going around for Snarled. I don't know if you saw Snarled. It's like a group of maybe three or four girls who all have their own channels, but then they film Snarled together. Oh my gosh, no, I do know Beth B. Rad. She does, um, she was one of the girls, um, and she does, um, every week, rad portraits, where she picks someone who she thinks is awesome, tells you why she thinks they're awesome, and then draws them. <laughs> That's her intro, I just stole it completely. But, I love it so much, because there's people that I've never heard of, or people I have heard of, like Frida Ka- Oh, God, I can't say her name. Frida Carl, Frida Carl. And yeah. I didn't know as much about her as I thought, and she's even cooler than I thought. And she does, obviously, she does men and women. Um, she does people who have recently gone through things, like Kesha, and talks about yeah. that. And she always draws them in different styles, and it's incredible. Everything that she does, her drawings are just impeccable, as well as all her research. I love it. So, mm. Rad Art with Beth B. Rad is a big one. And she <laughs> she Twitch streams as well. She can't Twitch stream it every time because sometimes she doesn't do it on her computer. So, like, if she's doing, like, an, an oil painting or whatever, she can't really Twitch stream that. But uh, if she's doing it on the computer, she'll Twitch stream it, and that's always a nice one to follow along to with a brew. And because she doesn't have, like, tons of subscribers, like, you could always have a conversation with her on Twitch as well. I've never, I've never talked, like, messaged her on Twitch, but it's nice watching people and watching her have a conversation, because you don't really get that with people who are bigger, so. Yeah, that's true. So that's we, cool. Yeah, I'd forgotten <laughs> about her, which is back to drawing. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, skipping, uh, I guess, to a new topic, I don't think we've really covered um, TV animation, have we? I don't think so. Uh, there's a channel called Lootoons. Lootoons? Spell it yeah. for me. Um, L-E-W-T-O-O-N-S. Perfect. Now, I really like this guy's channel. Um, I mainly go for his every animated movie of the year reviews. So every time a new film comes out, he will go and see it in the cinema, and he'll give an honest review for it without any spoilers. Oh, that's good. So, if you're not sure about, say, Despicable Me 3, whether it would be any good or not, you can just, like, pop on his channel, and he's probably already seen it, and he'll give you, like, you know, a good all-rounded review of what was good and what was bad, and, and then he ranks them overall at the end of the year. Oh, wow. So, it's like a, a personal ranking. And then he does, like, uh, kind of like the anime YouTubers do, like, top ten saddest cartoon deaths and... Uh, oh, so, does... yeah, a little, like... Well, they're not clickbaity, but ones that you would actually want to watch from clickbait. <laughs> yeah. Well, he um, he has to fill in the months where there aren't any animated movies coming out, yeah. essentially. Um, but, yeah, I, I do watch him for that. And he draws as well. Oh, cool. He draws, cool. like... Um, he did uh, the Recess Gang ten years later. Oh wow! And oh, uh, drawing Gravity Falls ten years later, Undertale characters with pastels. Oh yeah. wow, lovely! <laughs> it's um, like a nice yeah. Do you? Because I I find sometimes I completely forget who has like um what's the word. Like, films that have come out, and I can be, like, sat there going, I don't know what film to watch, but I know that the ones that came out this year that I missed, I didn't watch. So that's always handy to go back to, isn't it, as well, for that reason? Yeah. And um, I've got someone else as well who, um, similar kind of vein, but more satirical. <laughs> okay. And uh, that's the Nostalgia Critic. I'm searching to the Nostalgia Critic. <laughs> I love this guy. He's so funny because he picks the worst movies, like the worst of the worst. He watches them and then he rips them to shreds. <laughs> <laughs> is 
this on Channel Awesome? Uh, yeah, I think it might be. Because I can't... Nostalgia Critic seems to be a series rather than... Yeah, yeah. It used to just be Nostalgia Critic, I think. But then it got Tamara Just Saw and uh, some of the other ones. I don't like Tamara Just Saw, but... Controversial. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but nostalgia, nostalgia Critic. Oh, he uh, he recently covered DuckTales and like, which was actually one of his more positive reviews. They're rare. <laughs> <laughs> but he covered The Sorcerer's Apprentice, for example. Wow. That was a rip and a half. <laughs> I love it when people tear movies to, like, watch bad movies and tear them apart. Because they need doing. They've been funded and people have watched them and they're bad. <laughs> Like, yeah. So I'm looking um, forward to that. I've subscribed to him. Yeah, he does some absolutely amazing stuff. There's um there's a top five channel on here as well. Um, within Channel Awesome, it, it's a guy who covers like top five best Power Rangers episodes or stuff like that. And he's quite good to watch as well. Yeah. Because they um they sort of intertwine the staff, so. He can be going off on one about how the green Power Ranger is the best Power Ranger. And all of a sudden, the guy from Nostalgia Critic will walk into the room and go, Are you dumb? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's like a little collaborative space as well. Yeah, and they dress up and they have individual unique characters that just reappear, like reoccur through episodes and stuff. Oh, like wow. the, uh, the happy Caribbean guy that just stands there and goes, Hmm... <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> oh, I love a bit of silly. Yeah, yeah that's good. Totally daft. Love it. And now we're going from totally daft to totally serious. Well, I, see, this is a new subscribe, so um, I I am loving her stuff. It's let me just work out how to spell it. La Madeline. So it's L A M A D E L Y N N. And I just love what she creates. It's so beautiful. Beautiful? Beautiful. Um, and she does all kinds of stuff. She does little vlogs, little beauty tricks, um, just style ones. And I watched one, the first one I ever watched. I'll see if I can find what it's called. Um, it was, oh, she does, oh, I can't think what it was called. It was like a vlog. It, oh, it's something sweet is what it was called. And it was just like a vlog of her day, but it was like a film. It was so artistically done. And she, like, made a drink and went and lay out in the back garden and drunk it. And then she came in and put a record on and danced to it. And then she sat and watched, I think she read a book or something like that. And it was just, she didn't speak to the camera once. It was like a film from that point of view and it was so beautifully made and it's really inspired me to make vlogs like that which is I think one of the reasons why I wanted to get back into filming but oh, that's, that's really cool yeah it's it's a different way of vlogging where you're yeah you're just watching the film but then there's all these other bits to her where she does talk to you and does a little this is how I did my makeup one or I'm having a really nice day or I don't know I just think it's a wonderful channel and she's really oh she's nearly at a million she wasn't a million when I subscribed because I subscribed a while ago but then I didn't watch very many and then I, f I found her again so <laughs> yeah well I guess kind of keeping on the um I guess on the people we respect kind of train okay so like you know you respect the channel because of what she does and how she does it yeah yeah uh, there's a channel I really like called Steph Sanjati. You may have to help me spell that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, S-T-E-F. Okay. S-A-N-J-A-T-I. Perfect, found it. She's a um, kind of an informer for trans women. Oh, okay. So, but she kind of goes one step further. She doesn't just talk about trans issues and stuff like that, but she covered her own transition. Oh, like, wow. Every step, even through the hospital, 
to the recovery period, even when she said she looked like crap. She covered it all because she wanted to give people a real life, you know, play by play of what it actually feels like or what you actually go through. Oh, wow. Yeah, you can see the facial feminization surgery. And yeah. she does say that it's graphic and she just obviously she's swollen and stuff. That's amazing. Think how many people that would help. Yeah, that's the whole point of her channel. And um, she never covers topics that she doesn't understand. Like, um, she said she knows male to female trans, um, like the trans process for that very well, obviously, because she's going through it. But if she wanted to talk about female to male, she'll bring on another trans person. Oh, that's good. And she'll get their expertise in that area. And then she'll talk about, like, dysphoria and mental health and... If she's having a bad day, she'll come on camera and say, I'm having a bad day. You know, oh. she doesn't hide anything from you. And oh, it's, that's cool. It's really nice, like, just listening to her. She's really inspiring. Yeah. You've and actually... Then... Oh, go on, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> she does the, She does all the crazy videos as well, like sleep paralysis and new tattoos. and So she's got fun videos on there as well. Well, sleep paralysis wasn't a fun video. No, but, you know. <laughs> but just videos that are like outside of like the biggest thing about her life. She's just more than that, which I think is great as well. Yeah, like she did um, reading her future with Ty Turner. You know, it's she's got like everything on there. Yeah, but then oh, wow. she'll openly say, you know, you don't see every side of me. You're not going to see my entire life, and that's okay kind of thing yeah and oh. i think the the absolute best thing really is that if any of her followers are struggling to pay for surgery for to get rid of their dysphoria she will actively promote their patreon pages oh. and if she can afford it like in in extreme circumstances if she sees someone who really needs it who's in a really terrible situation then she'll donate and promote and share them and until they get back on their feet again oh bless her oh i want to be friends with her yeah she's she's our bread mom <laughs> she's what, she has, sorry she's our bread mom <laughs> a bread mom what does that mean yeah she likes bread she bakes a lot of bread oh okay and bread mom <laughs> she's like a that. t-shirt she has a t-shirt which literally just says bread mom on it. <laughs> well, yeah, all of her things say, hi, hashtag bread squad. <laughs> yeah, we are the bread squad. <laughs> Aww. Well, you've actually kind of put me on to some more well-known YouTubers that I watch. Uh, Buggy2988 and Dodie. So, Buggy2988 mm -hmm. is a gamer and he does have a gaming channel but he's more well known for his rage videos um he does francis rage videos where um you'll have you must have seen one of them at least cuz they do they have gone viral where he smashes xboxes and it's all based on his weight basically because he's a big guy just buggy buggy yeah did i not say buggy no, you, you gave me two YouTubers. So oh, sorry, yeah, no, I said Buggy2988. So this one's Buggy, and he um, recently has gone through gastric bypass, and he's been talking, well, I, I think he had a sleeve. Oh, no, he had a bypass. He didn't have a sleeve. And he's been talking about that a lot, and really candidly. And I think that's incredible, because I have um, a couple of friends who, well, one friend who's going through it right now, she's about to have a sleeve fit. So... I think it's really incredible that he's speaking so candidly about it. I know a lot of people aren't thrilled and want him to get back to, you know, regular old buggy stuff, but I think it's, like you said about um, Steph, like, it's a really big thing to be so yeah. open about it, and, like, he's got so many people supporting his weight loss. I'm Wasn't just... this guy caught in a scandal at some point over YouTube? Ooh, I don't know. Was it? I'm sure... Because I've seen him before, but I can't remember whether that was over... Um, there was a huge fight that broke out between YouTube, two YouTube channels, really big ones, that turned out to be fabricated. But while the fight was breaking out, 
it was covered by all the YouTube news channels. And, and then he the did YouTube have a fight channel. Well, he did have a... He was friends with this guy. Oh, I can't... Is it like McChicken Nugget or something? I don't know. But they used to, like, row, but he was as Francis, I think. When he does no, his... It, it, it wasn't between Boogie. It was between two other YouTubers. But when those two other YouTubers came out and said, oh, it was all hoax, da 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 they started slamming the news channels and channels like the news channels. And they pulled in people like Boogie and um, Leafy and, God, there was loads of YouTubers they named and they just dragged their names through the oh. mud. It, oh, God, it was it was huge. Because oh, uh, I, I, remember, I remember looking into that for like, I think I wanted to do my marketing project on it, actually. Oh, wow. Because it was around the same time that the React channel uh, made that mistake. And... Oh. <laughs> yeah. It just all happened at once. Uh, that's where I've seen this guy from, because his channel got dragged with a load of others. Oh, poor Buggy. I love Buggy. He's so nice. Yeah. It's like it's like he has, um, he's got like a 50-50 split of fans, hasn't he? Some fans really, really love him, and then there's this other group that just seem to really hate him for some reason. I think he's based on his weight, to be honest. A lot of he does get a lot of stick for being fat and people wishing right. him dead and saying that him being such a big figure on YouTube, um, he's promoting an unhealthy lifestyle. Oh, is that that's kind of like what um is it Eugenia Cooley gets? Oh, I don't know. She's super skinny, like. Oh I, yeah. I think she's anorexic, but. If she believes she's not, then, you know, that's that's for her to decide, oh, yeah, I guess. I've heard of her, yeah. Um, I just, yeah, with that Steph, you reminded me of Buggy and also Dodie. Dodie yeah. won, I, she won an award recently, so she's not a small YouTuber. But she talks a lot about her mental health, in particular on her... Um, her Instagram. That's the word. Yeah. She's a singer. Um, she does covers and writes her own music. In fact, she's just recently released music, and I think she's in the actual charts. So that's exciting. But she, I just I adore her. She's just so cute, and um, I like the fact that she's English. I know that that's a bit of a weird <laughs> one to throw out there, but I don't know. I just feel very like I get her. Do you know what I yeah. mean? She's just living her own little way, and recently she's done um, a month of vlogging, which hasn't was meant to be every day, but she's kind of not done it every day. Um, but yeah, she's great. She's got Doddle Oddle, which is one of her channels, and the other one, which I can't remember the name of. I think it's Doddle Vloggle or something like that. <laughs> so... If you've not subscribed to Dodie, that's a really good one. She She's doing really well. She's just past a million. Well, I'll have a look then. Right, I think um, moving on to something, I guess, a bit happier. <laughs> yeah, we, we got a little bit dark there. Yeah. Um, I've probably mentioned these guys before. Are you subscribed to Threadbanger? No. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm ready. Take me down the wormhole. <laughs> right. It's three channels. Threadbanger, Corinne Lay, and uh, her other half, Everybody, welcome to um, Rob. Rob, Rob Zar? Rob Zar, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, they have their own personal channels, and then they have Threadbanger. It's DIY Madness. Okay. Did I ever show you the video of Rob trying to make a Christmas tree out of wine glasses hanging from the ceiling? No. I feel like you've let me down, Rox. I feel like I needed to see this. I've shown somebody that video. It doesn't end well. Oh, no. And these were Corinne's grand's prize no. cups or something. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful video. <laughs> oh no, that's awful. But you know, Rob doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
well, I'm very excited about this. I love DIY channels. Are they easy DIYs or are they just crazy? Are they what? Crazy? Are they crazy. easy ones? Um, yeah, I'd say they mix. They do basically any DIY they can get their hands on. Most come from Pinterest. Okay. And sometimes it turns into a, is this real or is it fake kind of thing. Right. Like, so, and then it, if a DIY fails, sometimes they'll try and find a way to make it work, or Rob just blows everything up. Oh, okay. <laughs> a nice mix, then. <laughs> yeah. Corinne is um, generally calmer. She's more witchcrafty, Ooh. Hogwarts Ooh. kind of stuff. Rob is more swearing, um, hard guy science, sucks at cooking. <laughs> Rob's just funny. Oh, okay. You've actually reminded but... me of two more people. Have you? But go on. I want to know more about these. I'm scrolling through. <laughs> Uh, well, they've just started doing live streams of their um, opening their post. Oh, okay. I kid you not, the amount of time Rob gets nothing but glitter bombs. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, Corinne will get these proper nice Harry Potter ones and handcrafted felt things, and Rob just gets glitter bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. it's, it's a great channel. Oh, okay, we've got to be rounding up soon, I think, because yeah. we could do this for hours. Um, but another one I wanted to tell you about was Helen Anderson. She's a new-ish follow. Um, God, I hope she's called Helen Anderson. She is called Helen Anderson. Absolute panic there for a second. I <laughs> found her because recently I have fallen in love with watching wedding videos to the point where I need someone to get married so I can film their wedding. I need it. I love it. So she got married recently and it has had the most beautiful wedding for, um, video. It's gorgeous. Um, but she's just, I would say she's a standard YouTuber. She does like haul posts and um, like makeup tutorials and things like that. But as a person, she's just a little bit more quirky. And I like that. She's not your standard YouTuber in that sense, if that makes sense. So the stuff she puts up, is like typical YouTube, but she's just got a funky, fresh twist. And another person who's similar in that regard is Kira Rose. So that's K I E R A, I think. Kira, yeah, Kira Rose. Um, she's uh, Kira Rose is slightly different. She does vegan posts. She's got rats. Lots of tattoo stuff. She's got anxiety as well. Um, but again, they're mo like they're just your standard YouTuber kind of things. But I do, I really love them, and they're kind of, you reminded me with that Karim, like that kind yeah. of witchy vibe, and I don't know, just all that kind of, they just seem a bit mythical to me. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They're just yeah. a little bit too cool for me. <laughs> I, I wish I was as cool as them, is what I'm getting at. Yeah. And I feel like you need to follow some YouTubers that make you feel like you could be as cool as them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a couple of them. Yeah, <laughs> so, is there any YouTubers you just want to shout out without going into any detail whatsoever as we're rounding off? Because like, there's plenty that I've missed. That... Oh, gosh. Um, Mark Fire, Jack Septicai, Cryotic. Oh, Cryotic, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I've been pronouncing that wrong for years. Apparently, it's cryotoic. <laughs> cryotoic. I don't even know where is he. I, he was one of my first subs, so I'm going to scroll all the way down. Cryo. Yeah. But it's it's spelled cryotic. Oh, I know. No. I know. That's so annoying. Yeah. Um, if, if you're into your cute things, lovely for you, Kawaii Patine. Two uh, cats, one doll. <laughs> uh. Um, I, I'm struggling here. Um, <laughs> Shout out Game Theory The Game Film theory. Theorists as well Film Theorists, yes Captain Death Death <laughs> I don't even know who these people are Jenna Marbles <laughs> Joe Santagato <laughs> <laughs> Manny like M.U.A. <laughs> <laughs> Odin Lake if you like swords <laughs> Manny M.U.A. Nikki Tutorials I haven't talked about it Kazurgistat uh, oh my gosh, ASMR darling. 
<laughs> oh, I've seen ASMR, darling. We didn't even cover that. That's no, a different video. <laughs> that is a different video. That's a video that needs to be on your channel. I know. <laughs> uh, we Shoe. Love We Shoe. Oh, We Shoe, yeah. We Shoe, the fitness marshal. Simply oh. neurological. <laughs> she, she deserves a shout out, bless her. She maintained a channel having no nails. <laughs> and it's I a know. nail channel. <laughs> what a girl. But on that I mean, note, oh, actually, well. Actually, I've got, I've got one more. Just for those people out there who can't be bothered playing video games or get confused by video games with long plots, Only Black Mage, he literally breaks down the video game into its bare basics and gives you a short paragraph of the whole story. Oh. I'm gonna f I'm subscribing to that. I don't have the brain space. <laughs> Only what? Oh Only... brain space. Only what? <laughs> Only black mage. Sorted. Yeah. Subscribe. Can you explain Final Fantasy to me. <laughs> I'm sub I I need that. I really yeah. need that. <laughs> <laughs> but on that note, and the most obvious shout out that we didn't give, which is Game Grumps, we're going to end this podcast. <laughs> so thank you very, very much for joining me today, Rox. It's been lovely. And I'm very excited to have even less of a life than I do currently, <laughs> catching up on all of these things. <laughs> If, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> if you've got any further recommendations or you disagree, then please let us know in the comments below. Um, or if you just want to tell us that you love them as well, because I can't get enough of hearing how much I love and we love Mark and Jack. They're our boys, aren't they? Let's face yeah. it. <laughs> so if you want to just fangirl with us, you're more than welcome. But on that note, I think we should leave it here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's been so good. I'm so proud of our first podcast. Okay, guys. Well, I'll speak to you again soon. Bye. Bye. Oh, it was so good. Yes. Yay.